Hello, this is Shmuel Moshe, and you are listening to the Weekly Parsha Cast, the weekly Torah portion podcast where I read the weekly Torah portion, then provide my own interpretation of what I think it all means. This week's portion is for the holiday of Sukkot, falling on the 15th of Tishrei, 5785, October 17th, 2024. We'll be reading through chapters of Leviticus and Numbers, that's Vayikra and Bamidbar. This reading will be just for the first day of the holiday, but keep in mind that there are several days after. I recommend looking into the readings for yourself in that time. We'll be reading along in English on Chabad.org as always. And I'd like to remind everybody, once again, I'm not a professional Torah scholar, just somebody who wanted to study the Torah. Let's go ahead and begin chapter 22 of Vayikra, verse 26. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When an ox or sheep or a goat is born, it shall remain under its mother for seven days, and from the eighth day onwards it shall be accepted as a sacrifice for a fire offering to the Lord. An ox or sheep you shall not slaughter it, and its offspring in one day. And when you slaughter a thanksgiving offering to the Lord, you shall slaughter it so that it should be acceptable for you. It shall be eaten on that day, and do not leave it over until morning. I am the Lord. You shall keep my commandments and perform them. I am the Lord. You shall not desecrate my holy name. I shall be sanctified amidst the children of Israel. I am the Lord who sanctifies you, who took you out of the land of Egypt to be a God to you. I am the Lord. Chapter 23, verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, The Lord's appointed holy days that you shall designate as holy occasions. These are my appointed holy days. For six days work may be performed, but on the seventh day it is a complete rest day, a holy occasion. You shall not perform any work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord in all your dwelling places. That's the end of the first portion. So, very simply, we talk about ox, sheep, or goat. Leave it alone with its mother for seven days, and then after day eight onward, it can be accepted as a sacrifice. So, interestingly, this is the same timing as the circumcision. On the eighth day is when the circumcision is allowed. And also... Don't kill an ox or a sheep the same day that you also kill its baby or its offspring. So basically, don't take out a a mother and then the baby the same day. Uh, That's not okay. When you make a slaughter, make sure that it is, it says acceptable for you, and then it shall be eaten on that day. So in other words, don't Don't let it sit overnight. If you're going to make a holy sacrifice, you finish it all in one go, or at least in one day. Keep the commandments. Don't desecrate God's name. And we will make sure that God is sanctified among the children of Israel, because it is God who sanctifies Israel. Another reminder about the Egypt situation. And then a quick reminder about the Sabbath day. So this is uh, the Lord's holy appointed days that you shall designate. So it starts off with just the Sabbath. So it's the six days of work, and then on the seventh day, a Sabbath. So the very baseline, most important first holiday is every week, Shabbat. Now on to the second portion. Chapter 23, verse 4 of Leviticus, Vayikra. These are the Lord's appointed holy days, holy occasions which you shall designate in their appointed time. In the first month, on the fourteenth of the month, in the afternoon, you shall sacrifice the Passover offering to the Lord. And on the fifteenth day of that month is the festival of unleavened cakes to the Lord. You shall eat unleavened cakes for a seven-day period. On the first day there shall be a holy occasion for you. You shall not perform any work of labor. And you shall bring a fire offering to the Lord for a seven-day period. On the seventh day there shall be a holy occasion. You shall not perform any work of labor. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When you come to the land which I am giving you, and you reap its harvest, you shall bring to the Kohen an Omer of the beginning of your reaping, and he shall wave the Omer before the Lord, so that it will be acceptable for you. The Kohen shall wave it on the day after the rest day. And on the day of your waving the Omer, you shall offer an unblemished lamb in its first year as a burnt offering to the Lord. Its meal offering shall be two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, a fire offering to the Lord as a spirit of satisfaction, and its libation shall be a quarter of a hin of wine. You shall not eat bread or flour made from parched grain or fresh grain until this very day, until you bring your God's sacrifice. This is an eternal statute throughout your generations in all your dwelling places. End of the second portion. So, we have here another holy day. The first month, 14th of the month, is Passover. 
So it's going to be a Passover sacrifice, and then the next day, it begins the eating matzah, unleavened cakes, for seven days. The first day, there will be a holy occasion, which means take a restful day, no work of labor. Then bring fire offerings for seven days. And then on the seventh day, another rest day. Also, when they get to the Holy Land and they reap its harvest, bring the Kohen an Omer of the beginning of your reaping. So the Omer is a counting. Uh, basically, the Omer is used to make the census, as many people have referred to it before, to me. So what's going to happen is bring the Omer and the Kohen will wave it after the rest day. So I believe we can consider this to be when the seven-day period is done and the, the last day of rest there is concluded, that's when this will take place because it's going to happen starting after Passover. Then from there, the day it gets waived, there's going to be an unblemished lamb offering and the meal shall be, as it says, two tenths of ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, fire offering to the Lord and libation and quarter hand of wine. And of course, do not eat bread or flour from parched grain or fresh grain until this day. So this is... Basically, you cannot break the matzah fast until this day. This is an eternal statute throughout the generations. On to the third portion now, chapter 23, verse 15 of Leviticus. And you shall count for yourselves from the morrow of the rest of the day, from the day you bring the omer as a wave offering seven weeks, they shall be complete. You shall count until the day after the seventh week, namely the fiftieth day, on which you shall bring a new meal offering to the Lord. From your dwelling places you shall bring bread, set aside two loaves made from two tenths of an ephah of fine flour, and they shall be baked, leavened the first offering to the Lord. And associated with the bread you shall bring seven unblemished lambs in their first year, one young bull and two rams, these shall be a burnt offering to the Lord, along with their meal offerings and libations, a fire offering with a spirit of satisfaction to the Lord. And you shall offer up one he-goat as a sin offering, and two lambs in their first year as a peace offering. And the Kohen shall wave them in conjunction with the first offering of bread as a waving before the Lord, along with two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord, belong to the Kohen. And you shall designate on this very day a holy occasion. It shall be for you. You shall not perform any work of labor. This is an eternal statute in all your dwelling places throughout your generations. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not completely remove the corner of your field during your harvesting, and you shall not gather up the gleanings of your harvest. Rather, you shall leave these for the poor person and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. All right, so end of the portion. So this is about the counting of the Omer. So basically for a full seven weeks you're going to be counting and after that is the 50th day and that's where we get to Shavuot we get a quick explanation of the different offerings necessary but this is most importantly the seven week plus one day 50 day counting of the Omer period followed by Shavuot which is a holy day a very holy day and the uh, donations or the offerings will be made the Cohen's going to get what he gets. And also, the gleanings of your harvest. Remember, those get left behind for the, the poor and for the stranger. Fourth portion, chapter 23 of Leviticus, verse 23. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month on the first of the month it shall be a Sabbath for you, a remembrance of Israel through the shofar blast, a holy occasion. You shall not perform any work of labor, and you shall offer up a fire offering to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, But on the tenth of this seventh month it is a day of atonement. It shall be a holy occasion for you. You shall afflict yourselves, and you shall offer up a fire offering to the Lord. You shall not perform any work on that very day, for it is a day of atonement, for you to gain atonement before the Lord your God. For any person who will not be afflicted on that very day shall be cut off from his people. And any person who performs any work on that day, well, I will destroy that person from amidst its people. You shall not perform any work. This is an eternal statute throughout your generations and all your dwelling places. It is a complete day of rest for you, and you shall afflict yourselves on the ninth month in the evening. From evening to evening you shall observe your rest day. So, this is acknowledgement of Rosh Hashanah, the very significant holiday, which in fact just passed, and then the day of Yom Kippur. So, reiterating what was covered in last uh, week's holiday, it is one that is so holy and so sacred that if you violate this one, 
if you break this sh- the Sabbath of Yom Kippur, it's not just you've broken the rules. This is this is dire. So uh, it's it's very 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 serious. Do not do it on Yom Kippur. Make sure that you rest. On to the fifth portion, chapter twenty three, Leviticus, verse thirty three. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month is the festival of Sukkot, a seven-day period to the Lord. On the first day it is a holy occasion. You shall not perform any work of labor. For a seven-day period you shall bring a fire offering to the Lord. On the eighth day it shall be a holy occasion for you, and you shall bring a fire offering to the Lord. It is a day of detention. You shall not perform any work of labor. These are God's appointed holy days that you shall designate them as holy occasions, on which to offer up a fire offering to the Lord, burnt offering and meal offering, sacrifice and libation, the requirement of each day on its day. Apart from the Lord's Sabbaths, and apart from your gifts, and apart from all your vows, and apart from all your donations that you give to the Lord, but on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you gather in the produce of the land, you shall celebrate the festival of the Lord for a seven-day period. The first day shall be a rest day, and the eighth day shall be a rest day. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of the Hadar tree, date palm fronds, a branch of a braided tree, and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for a seven-day period. And you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord for seven days in the year. It is an eternal statute throughout your generations that you celebrate in the seventh month. For a seven-day period you shall live in booths, every resident among the Israelites shall live in booths, in order that your ensuing generations should know that I had the children of Israel live in booths when I took them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses told the children of Israel these laws of the Lord's appointed holy days. So now we've concluded the fifth portion. So the significance here, this is the portion that actually covers Sukkot, the reason we're doing this entire reading. So this is for the first day once again. And basically, just to reiterate, Sukkot is a harvest holiday where uh, following the 10th day, Yom Kippur, so we have this great time where everybody gathers in all their their harvest and comes together to celebrate the festival of the Lord. So this is going to be a rest day in the beginning and a rest day at the end of the 8th day or on the 8th day following. So it's going to describe here taking the fruit of the Hadar tree, date palm fronds, branch of a braided tree, the wills of the brook, right? So we have uh, very specific traditional items that are uh, held inside of the sukkah. And to dwell and eat inside of it is considered to be a good thing. It's a reminder of what the Israelites had to do while they were traveling through the desert. And so that is the significance of this holiday, is to really make sure never to forget the journey of the ancestors who walked through those deserts. So this is the tradition behind the holiday. Now for the Moftir portion, uh, this is from the book of Numbers, Bamid Bar, chapter 29, verse 12. And on the 15th day of the seventh month, there shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall not perform any mundane work, and you shall celebrate a festival to the Lord for seven days. You shall offer up a burnt offering, a fire offering for a spirit of satisfaction to the Lord, thirteen young bulls, two rams, fourteen lambs in the first year. They shall all be unblemished. And their meal offering shall be fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths for each bull, and for the thirteen bulls, two-tenths for each ram for the two rams, and one-tenth for each lamb for the fourteen lambs, and one young male goat for a sin offering, besides the continual burnt offering, its meal offering, and its libation. So here we have in this portion just another reminder, once again, for Sukkot, fifteenth day of the seventh month, Holy Convocation, right before Sukkot, and this is going to be the uh, seven-day period, of celebrating so uh, this is going to be where you don't do any mundane work and you offer up the burnt offering we have a list of what needs to be offered 13 bulls two rams 14 lambs in the first year they shall all be unblemished this kind of reminds me of when the different princes of the 12 tribes came forward and made their sacrifices in sequence Uh, but anyhow plenty of animals there to be sacrificed And then from there, we also have the meal offering as well. So keep an eye on those numbers. And then, of course, a male goat for a sin offering. And then this is besides the continual burnt offering meal and libation. So what this basically would be referring to is not just to do this particular bonus sacrifice, but also don't forget to also do the regular ones. So if there was a designated sacrifice that would have normally been done that day, it's saying make sure you do that too, but also do this other one. 
And that's it for this week's, or I should say this day's portion for Sukkot. I would recommend to everybody on your own time following listening to this, it may very well be appropriate to get ready for the second day reading. So make sure that you are uh, listening or at least checking out some place where you can hear the reading for Sukkot every single day. But all in all, I hope you have a wonderful Sukkot. Enjoy your time wherever you are and find a nice booth to dwell in if you don't build one yourself. It's a very significant holiday. These are the high holy days after all. Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur Sukkot. So if you can do it, you should definitely do it if you want to be connected with the holidays and commandments of the Torah. Until next time, this is Shmuel Moshe with the Weekly Parsha Cast saying thank you so much for listening and I hope you'll tune in again next time. Until then, Baruch Hashem.